How should Europe respond to the threat of terrorism, conflict in the Middle East and Russia? Should it build military capability alongside, but in part beyond NATO? Many, like Britain, say no, NATO is enough. Others say yes, it must. There are things NATO can't do. This week, the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament is voting on a report calling for action. Among those behind it, former Estonian Foreign Minister, now Liberal MEP, Urmas Payet, and former senior military officer, Geoffrey Van Orden. So, why now for this report? First, of course, is the situation inside Europe and around Europe, uh, because lots of new risks, uh, be it terrorism also inside Europe, or uh, new conflicts, uh, around Europe in South and, and East and also increased aggressive behavior of Russia if, if you look what happened in, and still is happening in Ukraine, uh, what is happening in Syria. I suppose many would say that the United Kingdom has been the most hesitant about European Defence Union. We don't want to see a European army. Maybe with the prospect of the United Kingdom now leaving the European Union, they see this as an opportunity. And indeed, I've heard some of the ayatollahs of European integration who exist in this, uh, this parliament um, have specifically said this. Is there political will in member states for stronger defence cooperation? More and more European countries actually feel and understand the same, that they really have to do more. If you look at the moment, for example, NATO, around 75% of all uh, NATO costs are covered by the United States and Europe only around 25%. I don't simply think that it is fair enough. I have noticed a little bit of a coming together. Um, I mean, for example, I mean, I think some of my French colleagues have real dilemmas because on the one hand, some of them are very pushy about European integration and the EU being involved in defence. On the other hand, they are very protective of France's uh, sovereign status. If we want cooperative structures between countries, well, I have to say, these have existed for years, decades. The European Commission is expected soon to propose a European Defence Action Plan. What should be in it? We have serious threats which are common to all of our countries uh, and more widely among the democracies. We need solidarity among the democracies. We have a strongly functioning defence organisation. It's called NATO. It guarantees the commitment of the United States to the security of the European nations. That's what's important, that's what has credibility, and that's what we need to be strengthening. We have to be much more independent in Europe for our security and defence, but looking at what all is going on in Europe, I simply think that yes, European Union, European countries must be much more ready. How can member states be persuaded to invest more in defence, above, for example, 2% of GDP? 2% of GDP for defence. We all know that uh, it's a uh, target for NATO, but I think that it also should be target for, for the EU, so that also all EU countries will contribute more for defence, because the quality will not come without a certain level of quantity as well. A lot of the European member countries, the majority of them, are spending uh, less than half of that amount uh, on defence. I suspect some of them think, oh well, if the EU gets involved in defence, we can spend even less. Let the EU pick up some of the bills and that. That's frankly not going to work. What we need to see is each of our nations, each of our member states, investing more in defence. What concrete steps can be taken to give impetus to a new NATO-EU strategic partnership? I guess it is some so-called civilian missions, also supporting military missions or humanitarian missions. Secondly, there could be certain situations and areas where maybe NATO flag is more irritating than EU flag on the ground. So that this is uh, this is second option. And, um, and thirdly, we also should understand that not all EU member states are NATO members, but we also should engage these countries uh, much more also to our security cooperational frameworks than, than so far. If it really wants to complement NATO military capabilities, what the EU should be doing is focusing on its civil capabilities. All those other instruments that it has at its disposal, financial, political and so on, 
uh, where they can get involved in crisis management, post-conflict uh, um, redevelopment, uh, conflict resolution, humanitarian assistance, all of these things. Uh, the EU could play a very useful role if only it would focus its efforts into those areas and actually get them right, because they can't even get those right at the moment, then I think that would be a good contribution.